hello everyone and welcome to third video on the series of dynamic programming we are still solving some basic questions and they are more or less based on the same pattern and today we are going to look at this question treat for the cows this is again a dynamic programming question from sposh and i would not go into the text of the question but what it essentially says is that there are these many treats here 13152 and the the value of a treat increases by the day which means if on day one you chose to take the treat number two the value of the treat is two into one which is two and if if on day two you again choose to take the treat number one the value of the treat is one into two two because the day has increased by one right so the value of treat becomes two so in this fashion we have to find out what is the maximum value that can be achieved out of these given treats here right so essentially what it so the problem is one three one five two right one three one five two so one of the solutions could be on day one i am taking this treat one into one plus on day two i can be taking this treat 2 into 2 plus on day 3 I can be taking third treat on day 4 I could be taking and on day 5 I could be taking this treat right so it becomes 1 into 1 which is 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 4 plus 25 so this is 9 and so uh, 9 plus 9 is 18 and 18 plus 25 would make it 43 right so this could be one of the solutions there could be many ways uh, many ways to take take the choices so instead of this way i could have taken let's say 2 into 1 so i could have taken 2 as the first 2 on the first day then i could have let's say taken 5 on the second day plus i could have taken 1 on the third day i could have taken third 3 on the 4th day and I could have taken let's say 1 on the 5th day which would have produced some value x which is non-optimal. So what we need to do is we need to find out what is the maximum value of treat that can be achieved and we as, as per the constraint of the question we can either choose it from the left or we can choose it from the right we cannot choose it from the mid. So we have seen it in the past right we have seen it in the past wherein these, these questions they generally appear as dynamic programming question because let's say you are sitting at a node zero wherein you have made no choices until now so what you can do is either you can choose the first element and your array now becomes one two one two three four five right so zero one two three four so your array now becomes one two four or your array can become zero two three right now zero one two three yes now you have uh, other choices as well now here in this case your array can become 1 2 3 or your array can become 2 2 4 again in this scenario your array can become 1 2 3 or the array can become 0 2 2 now this this redundancy of nodes is actually a sign that we if we use trivial methods to solve the problem we are going to solve the problem more than once we are going to solve the same sub problem more than once that we need to avoid because for sufficiently large array this would take exponential time for us to solve right which is not optimal so what is it that we need to do so at any point of time we have two choices to make right at any point of time so let's say i called x as my start pointer and y as my end pointer so x points to the leftmost element and so x is this and y points to the rightmost element here right so our 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 dynamic programming equation is actually dependent upon the value of x and y which means there are two variables right which means there are two variables that are actually impacting the decision that we can take at any given state in the array two variables implies that the dynamic programming solution or the 
memoization variable whatever you're going to take is going to be a two dimensional array right because we have we have learned in the past that the number of variables is actually equal to the dimensionality of the dynamic programming uh, memoization variable whatever you're going to work with and this is one of the most important fundamentals that i have at least kept in mind while solving a dynamic programming question so now it becomes simple so that i am actually going to work with an array of two dimensionality okay and the the question says the question says that the length of the array is up to 2000 right the length of the array here is up to 2000 so i am going to keep my variable as something like 2005 right and now the most important part the most important part at any given x and y what happens at any given x and y we choose max of so if we if we choose the left one if we choose the left one the value of the treat so let's say the value of the treat becomes array of x into days right plus then we again recursively call the function and when we are recursively calling the function this x becomes x plus y y remains as is days become days plus one comma your static variables like array yeah array and then the other case could be when we are choosing the element from the right side wherein this becomes array of y into days plus x remains as is y minus one days plus one comma array so array is the input array that has been given to us so this is the this is this equation is going to be our dynamic programming equation and uh, with that with that in place with that in place uh, let us let us see how to write the code for this problem okay cool so let us say we have a function called maximize treats okay in which we have a variable vector of int and let's call this array then we have days then we have int of x and int of y right and what we also need to do is declare our dp variable so this dp is going to be a two dimensional variable right okay cool now so we have seen in other videos it is supremely important very very important to have base conditions written because without base conditions this whole recursion will fall into an infinite loop trap so the most important base condition is if x is greater than y simply return zero because x greater than y would mean that we have crossed x and y have crossed and we are looking at redundant elements in the array that should not be looked upon and the other condition is that if we have solved a problem if we have solved a problem once we should not solve it again so if there is a value that has been already populated for x and y we should just not be solving that value we should be instead using the dp variable to return the value okay with now that in place let us simply write int of a equals to int of a equals to let's say a being the choice wherein we take the left element right so it will become array of x into days plus maximize returns maximize treats treats uh, array remains as is days increases by one x increases by one and y remains as is and in similar fashion we take another variable b wherein we choose the element coming from the right so this becomes array of y into days and days will continue to be increased by one x will remain as is and y will decrease by one right and db of x comma y 
will become the maximum of a comma b right and all that we need to do now is return dp of x comma y and And the way to call this function or use this function is assume that we have a main function. So the first step is actually to initialize initialize the variable dp to minus one all the elements, right? Because minus one is serving as the identifier for us to figure out if if a particular state of x and y has been solved or not, right? And then once we have set this variable, the other other part would be to just take input of the elements and we now have to simply call the function which is int answer would be maximize traits and vector would be passed as is days would be days would be one yes days would be one and x would be zero and y would simply be the array dot length minus one okay so that is that is how uh, we will go about solving this question and if you have observed and if you have been following the other other two previous videos this is the exact same pattern that we have identified to solve the dp problem wherein we first we first identify what is repeating right so here in the in our current problem the different states of x and y are actually repeating so that is one and in second so this is the first state the first step is actually to identify what sub problem is repeating right so once we have identified what sub problems is repeating we identify how many variables does it actually depend upon now in second step once we have identified all the different variables that impacts the state of your dp it we derive the dimensionality of dp from there and then based on the dimensionality of dp all that we have to do is recursively call the formula to satisfy the constraints that we have been given in the in the problem so these this kind of pattern it actually works for max or questions wherein we have to maximize a value or let's say minimize a value and we have like multiple choices to go go via right okay so that's about this problem i hope uh, by end by end of this video you have started identifying the patterns of how to actually go about solving a dynamic programming problem please keep liking my video share and subscribe to anybody and subscribe and share it to anybody who actually needs need help in dp because dp is presumed to be a difficult topic okay thank you so much bye bye